Hey, welcome back YouTube. Thanks for joining another Blades to Be project video. I have a pretty practical project I think for us today. Maybe even something you're going to need to build for your own shop. My issue is bench grinder space. Now that I've got the lathe and I need to sharpen some of these brazed carbide tool bits, I've got a 72 inch belt grinder and I've tried silicon carbide belts to sharpen them and as you get it sharpened it just rips the abrasive off of the belt and it doesn't last very long. So works but not, uh, not very effective. So I needed to get a regular green silicon carbide wheel on uh, in place, and I just don't have enough shop space in here for another bench grinder. What I do have is a buffer. We'll go over and take a look at that in a moment. So I've got a buffer and uh, talked to a friend of mine and he had a great system for running two different wheels on the end of, uh, on his bench grinder. So he's running a silicon carbide, regular green wheel, and also a diamond cup wheel on the same end to make sure you save some space and to really be efficient for sharpening these brazed carbide tool bits. So that's what we're gonna to put together today. So what we've got is a uh, an 80 grit. This is just a CGW 80 grit uh, green silicon carbide wheel. Got it off Amazon. We're gonna also add to that, we're gonna put a diamond cup wheel on in addition to that. And we're gonna stack both of these up on the same spindle on the grinder. Now, the issue I have is I ordered a six inch diamond wheel, five inch is what I really needed. We're gonna go ahead with the project today, but I will make sure I put in the right part number, uh, the right picture of the box for the five inch is what you want for the cup wheel. So six inch silicon carbide, five inch cup wheel. Like I say, it makes a nice setup. Uh, I've got some of the pictures that my buddy sent of what this is gonna look like, and I'll drop those in the video here before we get going on the project. So what it's gonna take is building some spacers. There's our project plan for the uh, the spacers we're gonna build. Again, I'll put in a, a good picture of this, shows all the dimensions on there. If you wanna be able to build one of these at home for yourself. Hey YouTube, I'm dropping a quick update in here. The five inch wheel finally came in and I know I posted a picture of the spacers that I made but had to make a modification. This new wheel came in and it's actually a little bit thicker in here. That other six inch wheel was only 350 thou thick. This one is almost right at half an inch thick right there. So 150 thou difference, it did impact the spacers. Bottom line, I'll, uh, I ended up having to remake my middle spacer. You'll see that when you get to the end of the video, but look at the diagram. Hey, just make sure your wheels come in. Make sure you can measure both of your wheels. You know, maybe you want to run a one inch thick silicon carbide wheel. Uh, maybe you have a different size cup wheel. Just modify those spacers as needed. So I'll again, I'll show you that at the end of the video, but I did end up having to modify the middle spacer on mine. Essentially just three parts of a spacer. We're gonna stack those up on the wheel, hold both of these pieces together, making it out of some, uh, this leftover piece of annealed 4140 that I have. So that's what we're gonna use to make these three spacers and be able to put all these wheels on. So let's take a quick look at the buffer and where we're gonna put this on there and what this is gonna look like. All right, so here's the setup I currently have. Buffer that I've got set up on here, but you can see I'm out of bench space. I've got another uh, disc grinder over here, just not enough room to stick another bench grinder in, in place. So wanna be able to use this buffer for when I need to sharpen tool bits. So the plan is we're gonna take a silicon carbide wheel, we're gonna make a spacer, put that on, make another spacer to mount this with it, put a washer out here on the end and be able to put our nut. And again, this will be a five inch cup wheel, not the six inch that I currently have on here. So it'll give you some room to work the silicon carbide wheel before you're running into that cup wheel. Now, the system I'm gonna post that my buddy has, he has the tool rests and everything in place. Since it's a buffer and I don't have any tool rests, I'm gonna end up running this without tool rests. I'm not doing a lot of grinding. Obviously, if you're in a shop, you need it to be OSHA compliant. You're gonna need to put the tool rests on there. And again, I will post pictures of what that looks like. This is the project. Again, here's the three spacers that we're gonna build to make that work. I went through and added it all up just to make sure we're gonna have enough room and we're gonna take up 1.660 is what we're gonna use up on here. And I wanted to make sure that I'm gonna have clearance on that shaft. So 1.660 is gonna put us about a third of the way into the thread on there. 
and still leave room for the nut and we should have a little bit of thread left over. So obviously if you're starting to do this, you can look at the dimensions. I'll post a good picture of that drawing. Make sure you have enough spindle room to do that. And the last piece, because this is a buffer, it actually has a little pin on there. So there's keyways in these current spacers. I don't have a uh, brooch to be able to cut a keyway, but we are gonna have to go take that first spacer, drop it in the mill and notch out a little bit on the end to make sure that I'm gonna be able to fit over that roll pin. I don't wanna have to be taking that roll pin in and out every time I switch it from buffer over to grinder. So we'll just take our first spacer and we're gonna notch out a little keyway in that to make sure it fits over. So that's the project, stay tuned. Let's get over to the lathe and let's start making some chips. All right, we are set up in the lathe. Let's get our piece in here. And the first one we're gonna make is 1.1 inches long. So make sure I leave enough sticking out to be able to do that. So we got our piece in here. First, we're just gonna turn the outside. Should stay right close to two inch. We just wanna make sure it does clean up. Then I'm gonna drill a hole in there just under half inch. I've got a new 3 8 boring bar. So we're gonna go ahead and bore that out to the, the half inch diameter, make sure that our inside and outside is concentric. But once we have it drilled, then we're gonna go rough off all this outside material, get our outside down to that one inch, about uh, 1.1 inches back. After the outside is roughed, then we'll finish the bore on the inside. We'll finish the outside. We'll make sure we clean off that face and then we'll come in here and part this tool off. Let's go ahead and get this faced and turned on the outside. And we're gonna turn that at 900 RPM. Calculator says 800, but this is annealed, not the heat treated 4140, so we can go a little faster. All right, there we go, we got it faced off. Just took a skim off of the outside, took 10 thou, so yes, that puts us about 12 under total from where I touched off, so that is gonna be fine. Let's get that drilled, then we will come and rough off this outer step here. All right, let's come back and get the outside off of here now. So I'm just gonna take a quick skim off of the face again, set my depth, and then I'm gonna go back in 1.1 inches. There we are roughed out. Yeah, I got a little bit of heat in there, not too bad. On my first cut, I blew a little deep, blew past my zero, so we'll face that back off, clean it up, and then we'll mark that and we'll come out and face the end off to, to reset our depth on there before we finish this piece off. But let's get in there and measure that, and then we'll get that down to one inch. 936 right now. It's not too bad for temperature, it's a little bit warm, but while that's cooling off, let's go ahead and set up our boring bar. Actually, I'm gonna, real quick, I'm gonna face that off and clean it, and then uh, we'll set up our boring bar and we'll knock the inside out first. All right, we got this little 3 8 boring bar on here. Let's see how this is gonna perform. We're gonna be feeding at 4 thou per revolution, crank the speed up to 1800 RPM while we're on this little diameter inside, and just gonna take a little 10 thou cut, see how it does to start with. We'll get it out, we'll measure, see where we are. We should only have about 30 thou total to come out of there. We'll just skim a little 10 thou cut, we'll see how we're doing and come back and measure. Before I do that, let me make sure I know where my depth is set here.
Okay, it seemed to like that just fine. Didn't have any chatter problems. Let's measure, see where we are, and let's get that board out to half inch. Okay, lucky save right there. <laughs> I didn't measure what that drill drilled on there, that 19 30 seconds drill bit. So it must have drilled a little bit over. So with that 10 thou skim out of there, we are only two thou under our half inch. We're looking to go, I measured what was on that buffer right now. It has five thou clearance. I was gonna put uh, two or three thou clearance on there. So we're gonna take a four thou cut, should give us a couple thou clearance, and we're gonna be done. Because we took a heavier cut the first time, I think we went a little big on that one. Yeah, I think we're probably about five over. Kind of the same as what the uh, what the other one was. A little bigger than I was going for on that. That's still gonna work for us. Should have slowed down a little bit on that. Took that first rough cut at 10 thou and how much bar flex out of this new little bar and should have backed off a little bit and only taken just a skim couple thou out of there to see how much flex. Learning the new boring bar, probably should have slowed down to get that a little more accurate for, uh, for the piece we're making right now. That's still the same tolerance that was on the existing one on there. That's gonna work fine. All right, on our outside, we're trying to get to an inch. We are currently 31 over. That puts us at 19 and a half over. Change the feed rate on there so we got a little different finish. We will take 18 and leave ourselves a little bit to emery and polish that up. Half over is what we are right now. So we're sitting at half over. Let's break off these corners and then we will polish this up a little bit and we'll get in here and part this piece off and that'll be our first piece done. Just see how we came out on our, nice, right on our one inch. Just got a hair big on the inside, bigger than we wanted to. Let's part this off. So I'm gonna go 3 16 back to part it. I'm gonna go ahead and leave a little extra so that we can turn it around and face it off and really make it nice and clean on the other side. Bevel the inside of that edge and then just round off that outer corner on that one as well. All right, let's turn that around and we'll face that off and clean that up a little bit. Going for 3 16ths, 187, we're at 202. So we've got 15 thou more to come off of there. There we have it. There is the first of three complete. I think that turned out all right. Well, as I was saying over at the lathe right before the battery died, we got part number one done, turned out all right. And even though we're just a little bit oversized on that bore, it still, it feels good on there. That's gonna be fine. Fits nice on our grinding wheel for our one inch. We still need to get in there and machine out the back for that keyway. Still need to notch it out for that keyway so that we'll be able to get all the way on the shaft. So we'll get over to the mill to do that. But there is part one.
complete. Let's go start making our other two pieces to fit on there. All right, our next piece up is the spacer for the cup wheel. For that one, same two inch outside diameter. We're gonna have to machine a little step on there. It's 32 millimeter is the bore size on that, and that's 300 deep. So the wheel's actually 350. We're leaving that 50 thou for clearance to make sure that uh, it doesn't push up against the side of the, the green wheel and that the cup wheel is what's holding that green wheel in. So we've got 50 thou clearance there. So again, just two steps and then we need to bore it out for the one inch so that it's just a nice fit over top of the other piece that we just made. All right, I'm gonna leave enough sticking out this time that I can turn the whole outside diameter and then I'll be able to make both of my next pieces without having to take this out of the chuck again. All right, that should be our outside cleaned up for the next two pieces. This time we're going 300 thou deep and we need to go down to 1.26 inches. Yeah, I don't know that I really left enough sticking out of the chuck to make both pieces. That's all right. We'll just go with what we've got. We're probably going to have to move it again after. Need to take about 650 off of there to start with. Let's see what we're getting down to there. All right, I'm going for 1.260. I'm still at 1.373. So still another good hundred thou to come off of there. Point two eighty five, so that leaves us right at twenty five thou to come off of there. Perfect. That's good and roughed. Let's get our hole drilled in this. So we're gonna go ahead and drill one inch in there. That's where I didn't leave enough sticking out because I probably should have made the other piece first with the half inch hole and then gone bigger. So that's all right. We're gonna have to pull this back out again and, and tweak our other piece. So we'll go in there with the one inch drill bit. I will try to measure and go in there pretty close to the right size, and then we'll just face off what we have to after. Okay, we probably all figured out the flaw in this system. So clearly not operating on a full tank of lunch right now. We need to go eat some food. Well, that's a screw up. If we're trying to bore exactly a one inch hole, we probably shouldn't get in there and drill with a one inch drill bit. I'm looking at the thickness of that and I'm going, wow, where, where am I going to bore? Well, that's all right. We already knew we we're going to have to pull this piece out to finish the other one. So let me face that back off. Let me rough that back a little further. And then uh, let's grab a smaller drill bit to, uh, to get in there. And then we will have to bore out to one inch. So we're going to have to do our half inch hole and, and do a little bit of uh, small bar boring to get that out to our one inch diameter. Okay, let's try that again. We're at half an inch. We've got to get out to an inch, so we're taking another half an inch of material out of there. I'll touch off, use my DRO to sort of keep track of when I get close to an inch, and then we'll get in there and measure. We'll be able to put our bigger bar on here to take our finish cuts out of that. We should be good. We've got the outside all rough. Let's get this roughed out on the inside, get our bigger bore on there for our finish cut, and we should be done. We'll get you down here for a little better angle on this boring operation. Let's get a sense of where we are there. All right, we're right at 9.05. So we have 95 thou left to come out of there. Makes sense. My DRO is right at 4.02, so that's tracking. All right, 95 thou, we're taking 50 thou rough cuts. So we'll rough another 50 out of there. Then we'll take another 15 or so, and then we'll come back measure and we'll take our finish cuts. Actually, at this point, we're going to go to our bigger bar. We are at 9.55. We want to go about two over. So we've got 47 thou left to go. 
47 left to go. I'm gonna divide that by three and take three finish cuts. First one with this new bar I will touch off. I'm gonna take three cuts. So we'll touch off, we'll take a cut a third, set the flex on the bar, we'll come back, we'll take half of that for a finish cut, and then we'll take the remaining for the final finish cut. And again, once we set that flex on the bar, we should be able to move actual amounts and come out to exactly where we want to. So I've got 47 thou left, divided by three. 16 thou is what we'll start with, or 15, because we'll probably touch off a little bit. So we'll start with 15, we'll go. This bar works in a one inch hole and bigger. It is not going to work for us to finish a hole out to one inch. Back to our other bar, same concept. We're still gonna take our same three cuts. Let me reset my zero. All right, so we should have somewhere right around 30 thou to go. So I'm at 969, and I'm going for 1.002. 33 thou left to go. So let's take 16 and a half. Fifteen thou left. Okay, one point two thou and a couple tenths. Let's break the edge. The real test is how does our part fit in there and feel in there. We are good to go. Okay, let's finish this outside. We're going for 1.260 and we are currently at 1.284 and a half. All right, we have about 13 to go. Let's come back and measure that outside. We are 1.260. See how that wheel feels on there? Okay, well that's a little snug. We'll give that a rub with a little heavier emery and we'll just shave that down just a little. Don't want it quite, don't want it quite that tight. Feels much better. See how much difference we took off of there. Yeah, we're only down at 59, so that only took took a thou off. I think that'll make for a much better changing wheels out. Okay, let's get this one parted off, and that's part number two. Same thing, we'll go a little wide and we'll turn it around and leave ourselves a little bit to clean it up on the back side. That's a little warm, but there is part number two. We'll get that turned around, faced off, and hey, we are two thirds of the way through the project. Going for 187, right now I'm at 211. It's a 24th out to go. We'll just knock that off in one time. There's piece number two of our puzzle. So we've got piece number one, we've got piece number two, and we'll just make our end cap for piece number three, and then we're ready to go notch out the backside of this. Coming along.
It's time to go have some lunch. Let's see if we can reduce that error rate by putting a little bit of food in there. We'll come back after lunch. We'll knock out number three and we'll uh, go over to the mill and knock out our little notch on the backside there. Stay tuned. All right, quick check in, see how we're doing so far. So we've got our two pieces done. So that one drops in there nicely. Flip that over, set our second piece in place. Drops in there nicely. Got two of them on there. Now we're gonna make our third, basically just a big washer to go on the back side of that so that uh, we can bolt it on. Let's go take a look, see how this is looking on the buffer. So we still need to notch our piece out. So that's gonna push us back another three eighths of an inch or so. We still have plenty of room in there. Right now we're just about where we wanna be for our nut to be even. We're gonna move that in, like I say, another probably three eighths of an inch, and then we're gonna add another three sixteenths inch of thickness out here. So we should still end up with plenty of room for the nut to go on. We just gotta notch that out to get over that keyway back there. But yeah, looking good. Let's get it back over to the lathe and let's get uh, part number three made. Then we'll get on the mill, notch it out, and we'll be ready to bolt this thing all together. I think it likes that speed better for getting a nice finish on this. Annealed. We need to go a little faster to clean this stuff up. So here we are making number three. Get that light out of there. So we're making spacer number three. So this is just an eighth of an inch on that step to make sure that we have clearance and it doesn't run into our other piece that's three sixteenths deep. So it gives us some clearance. And then, uh, so an eighth of an inch step, three sixteenths thick on the flange. And this one is back to our half inch board hole in there. So we'll drill it 19, 30 seconds. That's where we went a little big the last time because we were kind of rushing it and didn't really pay attention to where our, what size our drill drilled. So let's slow that part down a little bit, but we'll do the same, 19, 30 seconds. And then we'll just have to tickle through that with that little three eighths boring bar to get that to happen inch so it should go pretty quick all right i want to make sure i clean up to where my step is right there so let me just face a little bit off the front to do that We're going for an inch and I'm still at, yeah, 1.23. So we still have a couple hundred thou to go off there. Yeah, glad I measured again. So we only have 85 thou to go, not a couple hundred. So we've got 85 thou to come off of there. So let's take 50, clean up that face a little bit. Leaves us with about 37 to come off of that when we're ready. Let's go ahead and get this drilled and bored out. I think I solved our drill bit problem. 1930 seconds, that's the drill bit I was using on my uh, hub job the other day. 1530 seconds is what I thought I drilled last time, but I actually drilled 3164. So that's why our boring bar was so close. It was right on there. Uh, we were within a 64th, not within a 30 second. So this time, I'm going to drill us out at 15, 30 seconds. That'll give us a little more to bore and figure out where we are and make sure we're in there right. Leave enough room for what we're parting off and everything here as well. So we got yeah, and our parting tool. We can kind of go about a half an inch, not waste material. Okay, that should have us ready to get set. Tried to give you a good angle on this boring operation. This time we should be able to take a little 10 thou skim off of there, see how we're doing, take a measurement, and then we will uh, take some finish cuts to get up and hit a little closer to our half inch plus a couple thou dimension on this one. Got four thou per revolution feed, should be good.
All right, we are at 483, 43 and a half. That gives us 17, about 19 thou to go. All right, so if we got 19 to go, we're gonna take 10 and then we'll come back and try and take 10 more. Yeah, so that took a little more than 10 thou out of there. All right, so that's only leaving us with six and a half to go to get to our two over. So I am gonna go six. And that should be about one thou cleared. So maybe a little snug on the shaft. We'll have to see when we're done. We'll get in there and clean it up a little bit with some emery after if we have to, but I think that's gonna work. Definitely tighter than we had last time around. Oh, while we got this on there, let's go ahead and put our bevel in there. We'll reset our zero on that. We're going for we bored that other hole a couple over, so yes, I want to hit right at one inch on this. My clearance is already on the on the bore. So I have 38 thou to take off of there. So let's take about 19. We'll come back and take 19 more. And we have 16 and a half, 17 to go. Not really going to be able to emery in there, so we'll go ahead and take a full 17. Ooh, let's see how tight a fit that is. I'm getting one over on that. Oh, that's gonna work. Short enough, lines up on there. So. Okay, touch that with a little emery real quick, clean off any rounded edges, and then uh, let's get that parted off, and then we can get to the mill. Give that another minute or so to cool down. A little hot potato there. We're grabbing onto a very teeny tiny bit of that, only an eighth of an inch flange. So I'm gonna put this center up close. I'm gonna machine it, make sure it feels good, make sure it can't go anywhere. And then I will pull that center out just to tickle off that last little bit there on the inside. But for now, again, that's just there as our little safety precaution. Make sure it's not going to fly out. And there we are, part number three. So there we go, there's our part number three all ready to go. Let's go take a look at how this looks on the buffer and then we'll get our piece set up in the mill and notch that out and uh, be ready to close this project out. All right, so we've got our first piece on there. We've got the grinding wheel on. Part number two. Get part number three in there. Or sorry, part number two is in there. And then part number three. Nice fit over. And doesn't look like we have too much nut right now, but again, we're gonna move all that on there. Another 3 eighths of an inch or so after we cut that notch. But so far, it is looking just like it's supposed to. So let's get over to the mill. Let's cut the notch in that first piece. Then we'll really get this thing put together properly. All 
All right, we are about ready to get set up in here. So for this piece, I'm gonna drop that in my vise. And I think, yeah, what I've got is a, I've got an old half inch end mill here. I'm just gonna hold that upside down in a collet. And I'm just gonna use that to quickly find where my center is of my hole. And then once I find the center, I'm gonna grab an eighth inch end mill and we'll cut our notch in there. So let's go ahead and find that center. All right, I still have another inch to go from there. It's gonna be cutting it pretty close. Let's drop this head a little bit. I don't wanna be cutting it that close, no reason to. All right, that is lined up close enough for what we are doing. So let me zero the DRO there. Ooh, just enough room to get it up. So we've got our piece centered up in here. It's actually a 7 64th keyway, not a 1 8th keyway. I had just kind of quickly measured it before, but went back, remeasured it. So I've got a 7 64th end mill in there. I'm going to touch off on that outside of that radius, and then I'm going to move over 109 thou, the full diameter of that end mill. So half of that is going to get me to where it's just cutting in that radius, and then the other half should get me the depth that I need for the keyway. So once we do that, then I'm going to come straight down three eighths of an inch after I'm down three eighths. Then I'm going to go ahead and feed it out and just make sure that we leave nice square edges on that hole cut in there. Let's go in there and take a look. Very small cutter. So we are running at a full 3000 RPM fast as my mill will go. I think that's got it. Yeah. Obviously a nice rounded top since I don't have a brooch to cut a flat keyway in there, but that should get us on our shaft. Let's head back over to the buffer. First, let me uh, deburr that chip out of there. We'll get that cleaned off and then we'll go back over to the buffer and we'll see how that fits. Okay, so there we are. Got our nice little keyway cut in there and that slides over and that is going to fit on there just like it is supposed to. Perfect. All right. So we've got that piece in place. All right. We've got that piece in place. Let's get the rest on here. Looks good. We've got a little little bit of thread left over and there's our finished setup bolted on let me go grab a wrench we'll tighten that up and we will give this a spin now again this will be a five inch wheel and uh, i will wait until that comes in on wednesday and i'll do a quick close out of the video actually grinding something don't want to grind anything today since i'm sending this wheel back but uh yeah let's go ahead and get that tightened let's do a quick spin test on this see how it's going All right, everything seems nice and tight and secure on there. So let's give that a test. All right, I'm just gonna flip that on. Never wanna stand in front of a brand new wheel when you're starting it up for the first time. Don't wanna reach my arm across that. There we have it. That is gonna work nice. Again, you're gonna put this in your shop and you're gonna wanna put the tool rests on there. I'll attach the picture my buddy has where he's got the original grinder tool rest coming around for the front and he's made a modification for a tool rest to come around that diamond wheel as well. But that's the setup. Again, I'll wait when that five inch wheel comes in. I will get a quick video of that and a quick video of grinding a tool bit just to close this out. But I think that that is going to work. All right, YouTube. As promised, I wanted to drop in a video of this in operation when the correct five inch wheel got here. You saw my drop in video earlier where the new five inch wheel came in, it's a little thicker. What that really impacted was spacer number two. So I ended up remaking spacer number two to make it a little bit thicker to get more engagement. There's still a good quarter of an inch sticking out on spacer number one. I could make this one longer now that this wheel is thicker, but I did not go back and remake spacer number one. 
had the keyway and everything in it, didn't see the need to do that. But spacer number two, if I try to put this original one on there, it does still engage, but it's really close. It's just barely getting on the front edge of that. And even though it has good lock-in security on the back as well, I just wanted a little bit more engagement on that. So I went ahead and remade that spacer, added that extra 150 thou onto it, and we definitely get more engagement on there. This one on the back is still going to hold us nice and centered. Let's get this on the buffer and we'll show it in operation and we'll wrap up this video. Unfortunately, all I have are these monster three quarter inch braised carbide bits. Really need to get some smaller ones. There we go, all set up. Thanks for watching another Blades to Be machining video. Hopefully you enjoyed the project, making these three spacers fit together kind of like a little jigsaw puzzle. And uh, hopefully it gives you some ideas or if you're looking to save some space in your shop, looking for a way to sharpen your braised tool bits, then uh, you know get a couple of wheels on the same end of your grinder. Great project for you. Good learning along the way as always. You know, if you've got a brand new boring bar, then, uh, you know, just make sure you're taking your time with it, taking your finish cuts. Pay a little more attention to what size drill I'm grabbing. Here I thought I was grabbing, uh, you know, a 32nd under and had room to go, and I only grabbed a 64th under. So just because the uh, dimension you're going for isn't a super precise one, you still, for me, I got to slow down, make sure I'm paying attention. So good learning on that part. And uh, really happy with how this turned out. Hopefully it gave you some ideas for your shop. And uh, if you liked it, please subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to put videos out pretty consistently every week or two. And if you've got an idea for a project you'd like to see, hey, throw it in the comments. Maybe I'll be able to do that. Looking for project ideas all the time. Till next time, take care. Keep making some chips of your own. We'll see you soon.